Thanks Menscape for sponsoring this video. For today's cook, I'm going to be combining two of the most used methods of cooking. We're talking about barbecue and deep fry. Oh yes. And my ultimate goal is to find out if these two combination makes barbecue even better than it already is. Because by the end of this video, some of them are going to work great, others not so much. So let's do it. And we're going to start out with the most popular steak in the United States. We're talking about the ribeye. As you can see, this one is one and a half inches thick. It is a choice grade steaks with bone in. The first thing we need to do is to get it seasoned. For that, I like to put it in a steak plate so that my seasoning does not go to waste. Talking about that, I kept it very simple, a little bit of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. One of the most common mistakes people make is they do not season their steak properly. So make sure that that's not you, because besides cooking, that's the most important step. Now I'm first going to be smoking this ribeye at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm looking for an internal temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit, because once you reach that, take a look. It looks good enough to eat already. It's fully cooked inside. But we're gonna take it to a whole new level by deep frying it so that we can get a nice crust. For that, I'm using beef tallow and the temperature is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, I'm not trying to cook it. I'm just trying to get a nice crust. And once I was happy, take a look. Now that is a beautiful steak. The only thing left to do is to slice that open and when I did, oh man. If that's not a juicy steak, I don't know what is. That is what I'm talking about. And if you take a closer look, you can even see a little bit of smoke ring. But like I always say, the most important thing is how does it taste? And let me tell you something, it is hard to describe. You have to experience it. Dude, this is the perfect steak. The crust is on point. The juiciness is on point. Not even Gordon Ramsay can complain. Barbecue and deep fried steak in beef tallow is definitely a winner. Now it's time to jump on to the next one and we're talking about deep fried spare ribs. And of course, the first thing we need to do is to start with a full rack. Unlike baby back ribs, St. Louis ribs does not have that much meat. However, at least for me, it does have a lot more flavor. One of the things I highly suggest doing is to removing the membrane from the back. That is not a big deal, you just gotta get a butter knife, wiggle that thing around a little bit. Once it comes out, grab a paper towel and pull it all out just like this. As you can see, See, that's not a big deal and it does give you a much better result. For a binder to make sure everything will stick, I like to use mustard. You can also use many other things like oil and Worcestershire sauce. The next thing to do is to add a good amount of salt followed by your favorite barbecue rub. By the way, I'm using Guga's rub. If you want to learn how to make this, just make sure you check out the description down below. As you can see, removing the membrane from the back allows you to add seasoning as well. And that is a very good thing. Because now it's time to throw it into the smoker. I set it at 275 degrees. Fahrenheit. I let it smoke for a total of three hours. That will give it a nice color. Check it out. You see that? That's exactly what I was looking for. This mahogany color is a sign that the smoke penetrated in the meat, making it not only look good, but taste good. However, this thing is not tender yet. To help it tenderize, I like to use aluminum foil. And of course, if you want additional buttery flavor, just add some butter. You can also add a little bit of liquid if you choose to. But for today, I'm going to use a little sweet hint of honey. Now, the next most important thing to do is to make sure that we have a nice tight seal. Using three sheets of aluminum foil will ensure that that happens. This will allow the meat to steam inside making it super tender. Talking about that, after two and a half hours in the smoker, take a look. As you can see, the bone is slightly pulled back. That should be a sign that your rib is ready. To slice it, I like to put it on its back first. This way you can clearly see the bone. And to say that these ribs are juicy is a complete understatement. Take a look. That nice smoke ring is also something else. I mean, come on now, it's good enough to eat already. However, as you already know, we gotta take it to a whole new level by deep frying it. And unfortunately for that, I gotta pat it dry real nicely. Because I gotta do the three step deep frying process once again. For this one, I seasoned my flour quite well. First with a little bit of black pepper, then onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika and salt. Mix everything well and that was ready. For the egg wash, I'm only using milk and eggs. The first step is to get this thing fully coated with the flour. This will allow the egg wash to actually stick to something. Because the ultimate goal is for the breadcrumbs to stick. And if you do everything right, you should have a nice coating just like this. Now that is ready to be deep fried. 
talking about that for the oil I'm using lard. I set the temperature at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember it's already fully cooked so I'm only looking for color. Once it has reached a nice golden brown color that I'm happy with it's time to take it out. And yes they do look gorgeous. Once I finish deep frying all of them take a look. Smoked deep fried spare ribs. Now you tell me if you ever heard those words. This one is literally making my mouth salivate because after dipping it on barbecue sauce come on now. Let me keep my mouth shut and let you experience this with us. This one is definitely a winner. Be careful because it is addicting. Now we can't forget about rack of lamb, one of the most popular meat in fine dining. But today you already know that's not the route we're going. And everything starts off with the full rack. This is a domestic lamb. Unlike imported lamb, it has a much better flavor in my opinion. It does not taste gamey and it is just wonderful. To ensure that the fat is gonna render nicely, I like to score it. You don't wanna go too deep, just let the knife do the work. As you can see, once I was done, this is what it looks like. You definitely want that fat to render making it much better. For the seasoning, I first started with a good amount of salt. Then I went ahead and threw in a good lamb rub. This rub is super easy to make, let me show you. I first started with one part black pepper, followed by one one part onion powder, one part smoked paprika, one part onion powder, one part tahini, and half part cumin. Mix it well and your lamb rub is done. Like always, make sure to season it properly. Just like all of the other meats, lamb needs some good seasoning. Because the next thing to do is to go ahead and throw it in the smoker. For this one, I set it at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Let it smoke until you reach an internal temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that has reached, you should be left with this. If you've never tried lamb, take a look at this. Juicy to the max. And for whatever reason, if you tried it and you did not like it, I highly recommend you using domestic lamb. It is a world of a difference. And I have a feeling that if you give this one a go, you will definitely love it. But as much as it kills me to do this, we have to pat it dry for the next step. Now they are all ready for the deep fryer. Threw them in there until I was happy with the color. Because take a look. That is beautiful, my friends. That golden brown color is exactly what I was looking for. Once I was done deep frying all of them, you can see that we achieved perfection. But like always, the most important thing is how does it taste? Well, let's find out right now. Wow, this is... Just, it's not too greasy, super tender. This is perfection. Huh. The lamb itself tastes perfect. Like, it's tender, it's crunchy, it's beautiful. I'm telling you right now, if you try this one, you might get addicted. You've been warned. Before moving to the next one, I want to talk about some grooming because this video is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped offers the best tools and solution for the three big odor zones. We're talking about your body, your butt, and your balls. They've just launched their new Lone Mower 4.0 waterproof electric trimmer. And now you can get their ultimate Manscaped experience when you purchase their new performance package 4.0 bundle. This kit has everything you need for your grooming experience. With the new Lone Mower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer, you can tackle your private areas grooming without any mess and prevent nicotine and cuts. It has these replaceable ceramic blades with skin safe technology and a built-in LED light. I mean come on you gotta see the road where you're going right? It also has a wireless charging system and a new travel lock feature. This package also includes so many other cool stuff like the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, their new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. On top of that for a limited time you can also get two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Shafing Boxer Brief. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20 20% plus free shipping with code Guga or click on the link on the description down below. Thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video but now let's get right back to it. Moving on to the next one we got pork belly and you tell me what do you think of this? For some reason I can already read your thoughts and the first thing to do is to prep our pork belly. If there's one thing I always preach is that pork belly has already a lot of fat on it. So whenever you get in yours make sure you get one that has plenty of meat. Also notice that for this application I'm using skin off and you're gonna find out real soon why. The first thing I like to do is to score the fat. Doing this will help the fat render a little bit more. Now let's talk about seasoning. For that I first started with the master of all seasoning which is salt. Then I followed it up with my favorite barbecue rub. And just like I previously mentioned I made sure that every single edge of this thing was perfectly coated. Because the next thing to do is to throw it in the smoker. For that I set the smoke at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Once I reach an internal temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit I 
took it out and take a look at this the fat has rendered nicely it is extremely juicy now here's an important tip you don't want to cut in right away it's extremely hot if you do a lot of the fat will just melt away so restrain yourself for at least 30 minutes because once it's time to slice oh man take a look at this that right there is heaven on earth it is fatty smoky juicy and i cannot wait to try it oh my god that is one of the most delicious piece of meat you can have. However, at the same time, we're going to take this to a whole new level. So for that, I went to the three stages of breading. We first started with seasoned flour, followed by egg wash, and finish it off with breadcrumbs. The most important thing is to ensure that every single edge of these pork bellies are perfectly coated, as now the only thing left to do is to deep fry it. For that, I'm doing so using duck fat at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, they're fully cooked already. The only thing I'm looking for is color. And yes, I'm using duck fat. If you have not seen my previous video on chicken duck fat, you should check it out. There's something very special about this fat. And hopefully it's gonna make my pork belly amazing. Because once I've achieved the color that I was looking for, take a look. That is something you do not see every day. There's not much to say when you get reactions like this. Friends, this is a winner. Deep fried pork belly in duck fat. Yes, that's a thing. For the next one, we got the king of all barbecue and we're talking about short ribs. Yes, smoked delicious short ribs. And as you can see, once they arrive from my butcher, this is what it looks like. It is what we like to call the short rib plate. As you can see, this one has four bones. To ensure that my seasoning is going to penetrate deeply into the meat, I like to remove the silver skin right on top. Trust me, it makes a huge difference if you take it out. Once that's done to speed the cooking process, I like to split them individually. As you can see, I was left with four beautiful pieces of meat. Now that right there, after picanha, this is my favorite. For the seasoning, I kept it real simple. A good amount of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. As always, I made sure to season it well. Remember, this is a big chunk of meat so go slightly heavy on the seasoning because once you have done so the next thing to do is to throw it in the smoker i set my at the temperature of 275 degrees fahrenheit i let it smoke for a total of four hours and once the time was up take a look it has a nice bark it smells amazing it is looking good enough to eat already but at the same time it is not tender for that, we're going to be doing the same thing we did with the previous ribs. I threw it back in the smoker for two hours. Once the time was up, I took it out, removed it from the aluminum foil, and now they are fully cooked. Now remember, we did not remove any of the silver skin on the back. So now it is a good practice to go ahead and take it off. It is chewy, unpleasant to eat, and I highly recommend taking it off. Because once you chop everything up in small cubes, you should be left with this. Every single bite of this thing is perfection. Fatty, smoky, tender, and just a true piece of heaven. And I'm wondering what deep fried is gonna do to it. For that, I went ahead and made the three-step process once again. But to make things easy, I threw everything into the Ziploc bag. And if you think I let anything go to waste, you are absolutely insane. I almost licked the board. After shaking the bag, I threw everything into the egg wash. For my breadcrumbs, I'm using a combination of regular ones and also panko. This way, it should give me a nice crunch. Because now, the only thing left to do is to throw them all in there and shake and bake. What you're really looking for is to make sure that every single one of them has that coating of breadcrumb. Because now I gotta go ahead and deep fry it. For this one, I'm using a different type of oil. It is a Wagyu seasoned oil with garlic. That is very easy to do and I've showed it on the channel before. If you have not seen that video, make sure you check out the deep fried brisket. And just to make it official, I kept my oil at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Just like the other ones, these short ribs are fully cooked. I'm only looking for a nice beautiful color like this. Because once every single one of them were deep fried, look. These, my friends, are not chicken nuggets. It is some next level sh**. Excuse my language. I don't have words to describe it. You just have to experience it with us. This one gets a thousand out of ten. Now, of course, we gotta throw in the most popular steakhouse steak in the world. And that will be the filet mignon. Because come on now. Who doesn't like a tender, juicy steak? But let's find out the best way to cook it. And for that, of course, I started with two beautiful filet mignons. As you can see, these are not only lean, but they have a good amount of fat on them as well. I seasoned them well with a good amount of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. One of the most important things here is to make sure that we season this thing properly. I'm sure you already know that by now. To ensure that I'm going to be getting the perfect temperature, I'm going to be using my wireless thermometers. Talking about that, I threw them in the smoker at 250 degrees Fahrenheit until I reach an internal temperature of 115. Once the temperature was reached, take a 
look. Look at that, man. They look good enough to eat already. But hey, we're gonna find out which way is the best way for steak. Deep frying it without breadcrumbs or with it? For my oil, I'm using Wagyu fat at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I first started with the one without breadcrumbs. As you can see, I got the perfect crust. Once that was done, I jumped right into the one that had breadcrumbs. I kept flipping until I achieved the perfect golden brown color look. Now that is a deep fried filet mignon. And here's what both look like once I was done. Put down in the comment section right now which one do you prefer just by the looks. Because as I slice them, oh man, this thing is tender everybody. And as you can see, perfectly cooked. Wow. My mouth is just watering right now. And the one with the breadcrumbs, oh man, perfection, just as expected. But now the big question is, which one is better? Well, we're gonna find out right now. All right, everybody, here we have our final steaks. Are you ready, Angel? Uh, well, first I wanna say, Gua, I've been enjoying this video a lot today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and see it. Let's and, go. And uh, let's try it. Filet mignon is his favorite, yes? After picaya. Yeah. Oh man, really? No crust. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It's wow. so tender, man. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Super tender, crusty, mm. nice smoky flavor. This is fire. <laughs> this is like, I'm a caveman and I discover fire. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Let's oh, go for the next God. one. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> It's so tender that the crust is so nice. That crust is the one. That might be one of the top 10 steaks that I've ate in my life. This, really? This crust right here. Gotcha. It is stupid tender. It's so <laughs> tender that it's stupid. Yeah, I agree. These are awesome. This is a great video, man. Uh, I'm enjoying this video. <laughs> for you, which one is better out of these two? This one, same for me, everybody. Which one is your favorite overall for the whole video today? This one, oh man, really? For me, my favorite one, is uh, can I, can I try that? <laughs> come, Leo, come try it. I heard Angel hyping this up, so I, I, I just had to come try. You gonna go caveman style, Leo. Huh? <laughs> Look at Leo, Leo hungry, everybody. Mm, isn't it tender? <laughs> <laughs> try try the other one now. Let, let oh, these are two different? Yeah. Yeah, it's both filet mignon, but then we got the crust. Guga, I must say, I really like this video. <laughs> she said the same thing. Wow. Yeah? That adds a whole different layer. That texture is to die for. If you had to pick between these two, which one are you picking? I'm picking the crust. I'm picking <laughs> the fried one. <laughs> the fried one is better. Now, here's the big question. For you, out of everything you tried today, what was your favorite thing that you ate all of it? I'm going to have to say this one, but it's a really tough call because that ribeye that rib was, was crazy. Rib was was insane. If you are wondering about me, my favorite one was the short rib, everybody. I am a sucker for short rib. That's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything's always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.